Writing pseudocode. There are a few steps you may consider before you start to write a program. Step one is to get away from the computer, grab a piece of paper or a whiteboard, and start writing what's called pseudocode. Pseudocode, it's not a language, is the term for writing your computer instructions in plain English, to the point where it's readable by anyone who understands the problem, whether they can program or not. Let's see some examples. So in a whiteboard or paper we may write something like this. Ask user for email address. If email address matches accepted pattern, add them to email list. Else, show error message. Something like this. Pseudocode don't have formal rules. Now where I said, ask user for email address, I could have said, get email address, or prompt for email address, or if I wanted to break it out, I could say, create email variable, ask user for email address, store user's email address in email variable, or I could just say, get email. I'm just trying to define the structure of this code, what has to happen in my problem. And is common to see programming keywords like, if, else, while, and for, but it's whatever makes sense. And you also see pseudocode, often indented, like I have done here. And like any indentation, it's just make it easier to follow the structure. Now different people write pseudocode in different ways. Some pseudocode tends to take the style of the language. Sometimes you will see written partly in uppercase like this. And it's quite common to see people explicit marking where, an if, or a loop ends, using a phrase like end if, or end loop. The same purpose here is the opening and closing curly braces, in JavaScript or C-based language. The point is clarity, and understanding, can you read the pseudocode, does it make sense? Here's an example perhaps of going through a list of numbers and adding him together. In pseudocode the all point is to get away from braces, parenthesis, brackets, off by one errors, naming conventions, it's whatever seems natural. Now it doesn't necessarily break down to, one line of pseudocode, one line of real code. Sometimes one line of pseudocode, could cause several lines of real code. One of the best things of pseudocode, is it lets you think about your problem, without necessarily knowing how exactly code it. Let's say I'm trying to build a game and I know how to work with images. So I might write some pseudocode like this. If a missile image touches the spaceship image, well I'm going to replace the spaceship with the explosion image, then I want to play an explosion sound, and then I better check, is the remaining lives counter to zero? Because if it is, I may show the game over message. But if it's not zero, I subtract one from the remaining lives, I show, begin message, I reset the spaceship to starting position, etc. etc. So, pseudocode is not only for beginners. Many very experienced software developers still work out a lot of their problems in pseudocode, in a way of better understanding it, without worrying about its syntax. It's a great habit to get into, to start sketching your programming ideas in plain English, before you write code.